Okay, we're on to FP2, Chapter 6, Integration Techniques, and this is all in the A2 section. None of this is in AS. Now, it's worth saying before we even kind of start this whole chapter that I really do recommend this being the last chapter that you study from all of Further Maths. So you're obviously doing Core Pure 2, Further Pure 1, and Further Pure 2 if you're doing the FP2, and I would really recommend this as the last thing. It probably pulls together the most kind of content that's all on that kind of integration sort of section of stuff. It includes everything from trigonometry and hyperbolics, all different integration kinds of techniques. So I would definitely do this as the last thing that you have a look at. So I have got there just three sort of subsections of this chapter. There are reduction formulae and reduction formulae, they kind of link integration with recurrence relations. So you go from this kind of um, integral that you have here, and then actually you can can express this integral which has a power of n in this place you can express this integral in terms of an integral where n is too lower so you've already got that idea of some kind of recurrence relation notation that you've got there and we're just going to explore that as the first part of this chapter the next thing that we do in exercise 6b is arc length so it might be something like this where it asks you to work out the length of the arc between the points of the curve where x is 0 and where x is 2 so literally how long is that line now i know we normally use the word arc for parts of circles but we're actually using it as part of a curve here this is pretty cool we're now measuring like how curved lines how long curved lines are rather than just sort of parts of circles and then the last part which is 6c is we're going to work out the surface area when curves this y equals f of x when these curves are rotated by two pi radians about the x-axis so previously we were finding the volume of this kind of shape like volumes of revolution we're now doing surface areas of revolution what's the area of that kind of section that is on the outside so I would like you to sort of pause the video and see if you can have a go at answering this question and I've put this title of integrating things can take forever so I want you to start this question I want you to just kind of think what would be the first beginning parts that you would do and it's going to keep going and going and going so just kind of do the thing that you're going to do just do it a couple of times and I'll show you what I've got on the next slide so definitely let's not actually do the whole thing because it is very very long Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that. This was what I did when I had a go at trying to integrate this. And I, I kind of mentioned in the previous video, like, oh, you're going to do this thing like a couple of times. The thing I was obviously talking about here was integration by parts. So I did integration by parts to do this first part, then to be able to integrate this part. I did an integration by parts to get this, and then to do this part that we've got here. I did an integration by parts on that section that we had there. So that was those kind of three sections. And we should know something with integration by parts, right? Every time you do integration by parts, you will take the polynomial part of it and its power gets reduced each time. So it went from x to the power of 7 to x to the power of 6 in this integral, x to the power of 5 in this integral, x to the power of 4 in this integral. So you get a sense of how many times you would need to do this. Now, some of you may have come across um, a YouTuber who does this, the DI method, the differentiate integrate method for integration by parts. It is really amazing. It's really, really quick. But we are not going to be able to use that for this particular chapter because we're not trying to actually do the integration. We're trying to do the integration in the particular way that they want us to. And that way that they want us to do this is by using something called a reduction formula and in other words it's kind of like recurrence relations related to particular integrals that are in terms of n so whilst that di method is very useful if you actually just wanted to do this kind of your own way um, actually we're going to be forced to do it in this kind of reduction formula way if you have no idea what i'm talking about with the di method you can literally just put it into youtube i think it's black pen red pen is the youtuber who does this great sort of explanation of it but we won't be using that in this chapter because it's just not necessary so we're actually going to kind of think about what we've got in that previous question. We had x to the power of 7, e to the power of x with respect to x. And this is now kind of written as a more generalized kind of formula. Like if I'm saying that the integral, the nth integral, uh, where, well, not the nth integral, but the subscript n is x to the power of n e to the x and it says that n is a positive integer here um well i guess technically it would work with zero because if it was x to the power of zero you just have e to the power of x and um, we're going to try and come up with this recurrence relation now this recurrence relation that we have is this thing this is the thing that we are going to try and prove here so we are still going to kind of use the main techniques we would use from integration. And actually one of the most popular things in this particular chapter is doing integration by parts. You're going to see the integration by parts gets used a lot of times now. 
So when I do um, the subs the i that we have here, we're going to say that it's the integral of x to the power of n e to the power of x dx. And somewhere else on my page, I'm going to do my integration by parts. So I'm going to have my u and my v dash. I'm going to take x to the n as my u, because that's definitely going to be nice and easy to differentiate. We always take the polynomial as our uh, u that we've got there. Or most of the time we take the polynomial as our u, don't we, unless there's a logarithm. So I will pull that power down and I'm going to reduce that power by 1. And the v dash is the e to the, r, e to the power of x part, which means that v is also e to the power of x when we integrate that part. So you know how we do this with integration by parts. We then will just say that it is these two things multiplied. So that's x to the power of n e to the power of x. We've already used those two pairs, so it's going to be subtracting the integral of those two. So we're going to subtract the integral of n x to the power of n minus 1 e to the power of x dx. Now, what we want to try and do is we want to try and create this whole formula that we've got here. And you'll notice we already have this part, so that's great. But I want this i n minus 1. And actually, we can see the i n minus 1. i n minus 1 would be x to the power of n minus 1 e to the x with the integration sign. And we can see that because we have the integration sign, the x n minus 1, the e to the x and the dx that we've got like that. So what I'm going to do is just to kind of really spell this out loud and clear, I'm going to factorize that n out to the front. Now, why am I allowed to factorize that n out to the front? Well, the reason I am is because it's not a variable. It's just a constant in this particular kind of context, isn't it? The n is just going to be a constant. It is something that I can vary, but it is not the variable in question that we're looking at, this sort of x variable. So now that I've written it in this particular form, I have x to the n e to the x minus n lots of i n minus 1. Obviously, this thing that we've just got that's in yellow here is this i n minus 1 that we have. So we've come up with the recurrence relation that we have. We've come up with this thing that they've got right here. And we're now going to use this recurrence relation to find out the integral of x to the power of 4 e to the power of x with respect to x. So for part, well, it's not part, it part b. Part b of the question, we're going to try and find out i4. So i4 is x to the power of 4 e to the power of x with respect to x. Now, in order to work out what i4 is, I'm probably need, going to need to know what i3, i2, i1, maybe even i0 are. And sometimes I like doing them kind of in reverse like this because I think it can help us with the question. Now, the reason I know I'm going to need to use those previous ones is because the recurrence relation is relating the fourth one to the third one. The third one would then get related to the second one. The second one relates to the first, and the first one will relate to the, the zero one. So although it says that we can only do it for positive integers, we can still interpret it in the sense when x naught is going to be equal to... Um, when, sorry, when n is going to be equal to 0, because it still makes sense in the context of this question. So i naught is going to be the integral of x to the power of naught e to the power of x with respect to x. That's just the integral of e to the power of x, which is just e to the power of x plus c that we've got here. But I'm just not going to worry about that plus c too much. Now, I am going to need to know what i1 is. Now, i1, using this formula that we have right here, is just going to be equal to x to the power of 1 e to the power of x minus n, which is 1, lots of i0. Okay, so i1 is x e to the x minus e to the x, and I'll deal with the plus c at the end. Now, i2 is going to be equal to uh, x squared e to the x, so it's x squared e to the x minus 2 lots of i1. So you can see why I've kind of done it in reverse, because it's helping me kind of like build up to it. Now, 2 lots of i1 is going to be x e to the x minus e to the x. So it is x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2e to the x. Now, i3 that we've got here, using the formula, is going to be x cubed e to the x minus 3 lots of i2. Let's see if I can do this a little bit quicker. So that is going to be x cubed e to the x minus 3 lots of these ones. So I'm going to multiply them all by minus 3. So it's going to be minus 3x squared e to the x plus 6x e to the x 
minus 6 e to the x. And so i4, the one that I'm actually looking for, is going to be, using our formula, x to the power of 4 e to the x, x to the power of 4 e to the x minus 4 lots of i3. So that's x to the power of 4 e to the power of x, and I'm going to do all of these multiplied by minus 4. So that's minus 4x cubed e to the x plus 12x squared e to the x minus 24x e to the x plus 24 e to the x plus c that we've got for that last part that we've got there. Now, quite simply, you could have also done it the other way around. The other way that we could have done this is we could have said i4 equals x to the power of 4 e to the power of x minus 4 i3. And then we could have gone in with the substitution and said, okay, well, i3 is x cubed e to the x minus 3i2. And we could have kept doing that substitution in that kind of way as well if we wanted to. You just find whichever way works better for you. And I might find myself doing one where I do the substitution kind of with them increasing or one when I go straight into that kind of final part. It kind of really depends on which way you prefer to do it. But um, I just thought I'd show you this as my first sort of way of going through this question. So we're now going to try another one, and this time it is still polynomials. We'll do trigonometry in a separate kind of one. And we are going to do this time one with limits that we've got. So it says, show that if i n is equal to the integral of x to the power of n, the square root of 1 minus x between 0 and 1 with respect to x, then we want to show that this particular thing is true. OK, looks like it's going to be a good setup for yet again another bit of integration by parts. So we're going to say it's integrating between 0 and 1, x to the power of n. I do just prefer it written in this form with the kind of index form for that square root part. So for my integration by parts, for the beginning thing that we're going to have, I'm going to take my polynomial part as my u, and I'll take my v dash as 1 minus x to the power of a half. So differentiating this, I get n x to the power of n minus 1. And integrating this, well, I know it's going to still be a 1 minus x. I'll increase that power to 3 over 2. I'll have to counter that power with a minus 2 over 3. And I'll have to counter the fact that it's a minus x. So it becomes a minus 2 over 3, 1 minus x to the power of 3 over 2. So we now get that i n is equal to, just by using integration by parts, it will be these two things for the first part, which is going to be x to the power of n multiplied by minus 2 over 3, 1 minus x to the power of 3 over 2. And that's all going to have some limits that go with it because we're doing this whole thing with limits between 0 and 1. And then I'm also, I've already used those parts, it's going to then be the integral minus the integral of those bits. So let me pull this down so that I've got some space to do this. So I'm going to be subtracting the integral of these two things multiplied. Well, there's a negative there. So I'm actually just going to ignore that and change that to a positive. It's going to be between 0 and 1. There is going to now be a 2 thirds for the number part. Then there's an n. Then there's an x to the power of n minus 1. And there is a 1 minus x to the power of 3 over 2 with respect to x that we've got like this. So I'm now going to just quickly do a bit of the substitution that goes into these parts that we've got here. And actually, this is a really nice bit of substitution because if you substitute 1 in here, great, that's just going to be a 1. Oh, look, I get 1 minus 1. I get a 0. So I have this whole thing is 0, so the whole thing is 0. So when I put in 1, I get 0. When I put in 0, I'm going to get something being multiplied by 0, so the whole thing is 0. So I'm just going to say that beginning part is just going to be a 0 minus a 0. And now I'm going to be thinking about this section. So I'm integrating between 0 and 1, and I'm trying to get something with an i n minus 1. So I don't want to have this 1 minus x to the power of 3 over 2, because I want it to look like this, but with an n minus 1 here. I need to somehow change this thing from a 1 minus x to the power of 3 over 2. I need to get it looking back to this kind of thing so that I can begin to get this i n minus 1 that I've got there. So I've still got the... 2 over 3n, that's fine, because I can actually just put that outside the front. i tell you what, I actually think I'm probably going to do that right now and just put that outside like that, because the 2 over 3 and the n are just behaving like factors there. 
and then I've got my x to the power of n minus 1, and I'm going to split this 1 minus x into a 1 minus x to the power of a half and a 1 minus x to the power of 1, because obviously 3 over 2 is 1, and a, is 1 half plus 1, like that. And then I'll put that dx that we've got in that particular place. Now, the good thing about this is this is starting to look like, well, it is actually going to look like i n minus 1, which is the thing that I need right here. And this is kind of harder to see, but actually, this is just multiplying this whole thing by 1 and by minus x. So let's see if we can actually go about doing that. We're actually going to multiply this whole thing that we have here. We're going to multiply it by a 1, and we're going to multiply it by minus x. It's like expanding the brackets. It's just like a kind of crazy looking expanding the brackets. So that's 2 thirds n, the integral between 0 and 1. First of all, I'll multiply it all by 1, which is just going to be, um, let's do some big brackets here. It is going to be, yeah, I will do some big brackets. I don't, I won't do some big brackets. Sorry, I'll do the big brackets um, in this particular place. So when I multiply it by 1, I get x to the power of n minus 1, 1 minus x to the power of a half. And then I'm going to multiply it by minus x. So the minus x means there's going to be a minus here. And it's going to be, if I multiply this by x, it'll just be x to the power of n. So it's going to be minus x to the power of n, 1 minus x to the power of half, close off those big brackets, dx that we've got there. Now, you might not need to go in as much sort of as slow as I am here in the future, but because this is one of our first examples, I am taking it nice and slow. So this is a 2 thirds n of this integral and 2 thirds n of this integral. I can split these two things here with the subtract. I can integrate that part and I can integrate that part separately. But do just remember that 2 thirds n is a factor of both of those things. So it's going to be this. And it's going to be minus because of the minus sign that we've got here and the 2 thirds n the integral of 0 and 1, x to the power of n, 1 minus x to the power of half dx. Now, this is looking okay, actually, because I now have 2 thirds n. This thing that we have is i n minus 1, x to the power of n, x to the power of n minus 1. So I'm going to now just say this is i n minus 1. And this next one is minus 2 thirds n. This is the same thing, but i n. How strange. So we've now got this i n. And because we're trying to make i n the subject here, I'm going to add this 2 thirds n to this side. So that I now have 2 thirds n i n plus i n equals 2 thirds n i n minus 1. Now if I factor out the i n that we have here, we would get 2 thirds n. I'm going to write it as 2 n over 3 plus 1. I'm also going to write it as 2n over 3 on this side because I can start to see where this is going. I'm going to add these two things together. And when I add these two things together, I get 2n plus 3 over 3. Just adding those fractions is equal to 2n over 3, i n minus 1. In fact, you know what I could have done? I could multiply both sides by 3 and get rid of those parts. So now all I need to do is just divide that 2n that I've got next to the i n minus 1 here. I need to just divide it by the 2n plus 3. So it is a 2n over 2n plus 3, i n minus 1. Let's see if we did get the same thing as them. 2n over 2n plus 3, i n minus 1, and n is greater than or equal to 1. So you don't have to explain that last part. It's just to show that we can't just keep going and going and going backwards into these things. It's only applying when n is like a positive kind of number. So this was an interesting question because we had to do that part where we split up this power of 3 over 2. We did that to try and make it look like the original um, like integral that we were aiming for. And we did this kind of weird expanding brackets. And what that did is it created this whole integral as two separate ones like this, which then we could write as i n minus 1 and i n. And then we did that other strange thing where we grouped together the i n terms on the left hand side. You're going to see that's a really common thing throughout this topic where you kind of put them together and do some factorizing and some dividing that we've got there. So in the next video, I'm going to do some trigonometric examples. Um, they do get a little bit more challenging just because all of those trig identities are all going to come into play. Um, but these are a couple of examples so far on some more polynomial type that we've got.